I've been talking a lot about emergent storytelling and sandbox D&D campaigns on my channel lately, and I've gotten a lot of great feedback about them from people who enjoy that type of game. The big criticism around sandbox games that I've seen is that people feel that they can often feel directionless. They've tried them out and the players sort of wander about for a bit, but they don't really know what they're supposed to be doing. So they eventually get bored and the game just kind of dies out. That absolutely can happen in a sandbox game. And I think it comes down to two main issues. The first being the GM's execution of the sandbox. So how they're designing the sandbox. And then secondly, how they're running it at the table. And then the second main issue is really the player side and how they're approaching a sandbox game. I think there's a big difference in the mindset of playing in a sandbox as opposed to a linear storyline. And I've done a video on the mindset of a sandbox player. You can check it out on the screen now if you wanna see that one. It's really all about taking the initiative and driving the action forward with the group's goals. On the former, on the GM execution side, I've done a video on setting the stage for your sandbox. This is the prep work you need to do beforehand to make your sandbox successful and get it sort of started on the right foot. After that, we need to understand how to steer and guide our sandbox as we're playing it at the table and running the campaign with our players. The other issue people have with sandbox games, I think really comes from a misconception, and it has to do with this idea that the sandbox should be this totally pure kind of vestige where the game master doesn't taint it and rob the players of any free agency whatsoever. I think that's the wrong way to think about it. As a game master, you are definitely guiding and steering the players, providing nudges on different things for them to check out, providing different hooks and the conflicts that are going on in the sandbox. Those really help inform the players and give them information so they can make accurate choices and have fun as they're sort of doing their own actions and seeing what impacts there are within the sandbox game. So you as a game master need to do your prep work and execute on your visions correctly so that the sandbox is fun and engaging. You as the game master should be taking an active role in directing the game, but what you're not doing is forcing the players down some sort of linear storyline. Give them different information and let them make their choices. Think of your sandbox like the sport of rowing. If you're not familiar with it, I think you can get the idea that there are people in a boat and they're rowing it trying to race faster than the other boats around them. One of the common formats is an eight-man boat, which is actually nine people, but there are eight rowers who are pulling their oars and doing the damnedest to make the boat move as fast as they can across the water. The ninth person is known as the coxswain. The coxswain does not have an oar, but they're responsible for steering and navigating the boat and also shouting out orders and sort of setting the pace for the rowers to make them as successful as possible. In this case, your players are the rowers. They're making the broad strokes in the campaign through their actions and choices. The players are really responsible for driving the campaign forward in the sandbox setting. On the other hand, you as the GM or the coxswain need to translate the player's actions into conflict and consequences that ultimately form the organic story at the table. You're providing different information and beats that really help them sort of power the boat forward and move the campaign in the direction that they want to take it. I want to be careful with my metaphor here. While the coxswain is responsible for navigating the boat, as the game master, you are going to be directing the campaign, but your clues for navigation come from what the players are doing and want to do going forward. As they make their actions, you are responsible for determining the consequences and the impact of those actions. As a game master, this is how you are steering the sandbox and guiding the players through the campaign. Present the setting with a lot of fun and intrigue and mysteries and secrets and conflicts and give them different nudges and information along the way that they might want to check out. And they're going to engage with it. They're going to have a lot of fun. They're going to figure out what interests them and what they want to do as they go forward. But if you present a setting with your hands off the rudder because you don't want to corrupt their experience or taint their player agency in some way, 
Well, you're going to have a directionless and pretty boring sandbox. Hi, welcome aboard the Earthmoat. I'm Randall. Today, we're going to be talking about how to steer and guide your sandbox to make it successful and a lot of fun for both you and your players as you go through your campaign. Chris McDowell of Into the Odd, Electric Bastion Land, and Mythic Bastion Land fame came up with a really great framework that can help us run our games. This works for any type of campaign that you are running, but it's something I really keep in mind when I'm developing and working through my sandbox games. This is known as the ICI framework, information, choice, and impact. According to Chris, the goal of your prep work is to create interesting choices for the players, and we achieve this through the three steps in the ICI framework. First, we have information. We need to give the players enough information to make choices. If they lack information, then there's no real choice for them to make because there's probably only one obvious one and that's what they're gonna take. So as we run our games, we need to be as open and honest as possible about the situations that the players find themselves in. That way they can make the most informed choices and the choices that are best suitable for the current situation that the players find their characters in. Choice. Ultimately, the players are responsible for their choice of action, but we as the game master need to present situations to them that offer them multiple choices, especially situations with no obvious best choice. For example, do they choose to rescue the prisoner before their cage falls into the pool of piranhas, or do they go after the cultists as they're trying to make their escape? There's no clear good answer for the players, but they have a choice to make. Thirdly, we have impact. The player's choices are meaningless if there's no real impact. As the GM, you need to adjudicate their choices and then ruminate on what the impacts of those decisions are. Sometimes the impacts are obvious, other times they're a bit more opaque, and sometimes the impacts are immediate, and other times they're slower and take more time to come to fruition. In this video, I'm not going to be talking too much more about the choice component as that does largely fall on the players. We're going to take a more close look at information and impact and how we can use those as a game master to steer the sandbox forward. You can have a big impact on my channel by hitting the like button and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. As a game master, you steer your sandbox a lot based on the information that you are providing to your players. Information comes in forms of all sorts. It can be the context for a random encounter, such as a group of knights transporting a prisoner, or it can be the dusty tomes in an ancient library describing a historical event. It can be the details of a room or a portion of wilderness the players find themselves in. A partially frozen river stands between you and the other riverbank. The rushing water flows can be seen in parts of the river where it has not fully frozen over. As a GM, it's your responsibility to devise all of that information. And in a sandbox, that information will guide your players' choices and actions. So even though a sandbox lends much more agency to the players, the sandbox is not devoid of the GM's guiding hand. A lot of information will come from the elements you built in setting the stage for your sandbox. You'll be presenting your themes through information you're telling the players. The setting will come alive based off of the context you're giving it while you're running it at the table. But you get to decide which denizens lurk in the dungeon that the players come across. And you decide which secrets lie in the old wizard's tower. And you decide which faction will appear and when. Even if you are using random tables to make decisions, chances are that you have decided the contents of those random tables and thus are making some probabilistic decisions and choices in the information that the players will learn from a given scenario. 
When running a sandbox, you can dole out micro and macro information. Micro information is the kind of information that lets your players react to the situations they find themselves currently in. This is information like number of exits in a room and where they're located, number of creatures nearby, the pieces of a puzzle or trap that they're currently working. Macro information is information that informs your players about the sandbox on a whole. Examples include clues about a deeper mystery in the sandbox or critical details about a faction's leader or perhaps lore that explains a previously unknown or misunderstood piece of the world to the players. As a sandbox game master, you need to consider both levels of information to keep your sandbox compelling and keep the action moving forward in your game. I like to think about what information is going to allow my players to make different choices than they would have without that information? What information could change the perspective of the players in an interesting way? And what information could ratchet up the tension of the player's current situation? Consider some of those questions as you are actively running the game at the table or you are prepping for your next sessions, and you'll have a really great basis to go off of for your players as you can provide them the context of the world and the game that they're playing in. In a sandbox where you have no established plot until the players start to make one, consequences and impacts are king in driving your action forward. When the players make choices, there needs to be consequences. As I mentioned earlier, there's sort of this two by two matrix to the consequence outcomes. You have on one axis, obvious and opaque consequences, and on the other you have immediate and slow consequences. Obvious and immediate are things that happen right in the moment to the players. They choose to save the prisoner rather than go after the cultists. Result, the cultists get away, but the prisoner is saved. Opaque and immediate is probably the trickiest quadrant because in one way or another, the players don't fully understand the ramifications of their choice. They know something is happening, but they might not have the full extent of it. As a result, it may not be a truly immediate consequence for the players, or perhaps they don't know the extent of the outcome. Say they go after the cultists and let the prisoner fall into the piranha waters. Well, they know the prisoner is dead, which is an immediate outcome, but perhaps they don't know that the prisoner was the Duke's daughter. So that would be opaque. Obvious but slow means the players know a storm is brewing. The question is, can they make the proper preparations to mitigate it or stop it in time? If the players kill the son of an orc warlord and witnesses escape, chances are the orc army will be coming for the players, but who knows exactly when that will happen. Opaque and slow means that the players probably have made some decisions they don't understand the full ramifications of, and they don't know when it's going to come back to haunt them. Say the players break into a magically sealed vault to steal a great treasure, but by breaking those seals, they weaken a stasis ward that was keeping a lich trapped in a secret portion of the vault. In time, the lich will now break free and start making moves in the sandbox, but the players probably won't put two and two together until they've had enough time and gotten more information about the situation. By adjudicating the consequences and the impacts, you are once again inserting your game master hand into guiding the direction of the sandbox. While I do believe that your factions and NPCs are gonna have clear goals and motivations that will assist you in deciding the consequences and reactions to the player's choices, you're likely gonna have multiple options that could make sense as a result of those choices by the players. So you need to ask yourself a few questions. Things like, what makes the most sense here? How would the NPCs react to the PC's decisions? Is the consequence beneficial, neutral, adversarial, or a mixture for the players? What would drive the sandbox forward in an interesting way? Will this outcome or impact promote or break the organic story that we're currently telling at the table? When is the consequence likely to take full effect and become understood by the players? 
how can I make it obvious that the consequence is a direct result of the player's actions? Letting them know their choices have made changes in the world is a lot of fun. I love seeing my players' faces and reactions when they realize what they have done has created larger ripples and effects in the sandbox world around them. By taking careful consideration of the information we are providing to our players and adjudicating the impacts of their decisions, we're helping guide the sandbox forward. Just because we aren't directly laying out the plot for our players rail track by rail track doesn't mean that we don't have a part in telling the stories that are emerging from the sandbox. Use your initial prep to help you understand the context and the details of your sandbox. From there, you can decide how best to supply your players with the information they'll need to make choices to operate within your sandbox world. They'll make their choices based on the information you're giving them, and that will drive the game and the story forward. To maintain that momentum, you're going to need to adjudicate the impact and consequences of their decisions. Choose options that really promote developing that organic story, ratcheting up the tension and conflict between the players and the different parties that they're currently conflicting with. If you can do that, you're gonna have an awesome sandbox game. The story will emerge organically from the pieces and situations that you set up, and ultimately the agency will reside with the players on how they want to approach those situations. They'll decide who they wanna work with, who they wanna fight against, what the stakes are, what their goals are, and the story will really just start to form. And from there, you just roll with it. Hopefully that helps as you think about running your sandbox game. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. And if you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. We talk a lot about sandbox games, OSR style philosophy. Thanks for watching and I will see you aboard the Earthmo again soon.